Hi, Valerie. Hey, how are you? I'm I'm very well. Um, how are you? I'm good. I'm good. Um, so yeah, first I wanted to uh, to thank you again for for taking the time to to do this with me. Your last few weeks must have been a few months completely mad. So this is much appreciated. Yeah, of course. Honestly, it's uh, my pleasure. Um, yeah, I guess I mean I know you're, you're back home now, right? In Chicago. I don't actually, know if it's in Chicago, actually. Yeah. I'm from Chicago, but I go to school at Auburn University in Alabama. Oh, so yeah, yeah. I'm school. Yeah. Okay. I mean, so first, I wanted to start by, by asking you, because I'm sure that for a, a sports person in general, making it to the Olympics is like the dream. So how was it to actually make it? You know? Yeah. Yeah. Um, it was a dream come true. Um, I've been dreaming of this moment since I was probably eight years old, um, as long as I can remember. So actually being there competing was something so special. And then being able to represent Palestine made it a hundred times better. Because I mean, I'm not, I'm not sure many people realize that, I guess for a, a sports, like a professional sportsman or, you know, making it to the Olympics is, I guess the de dedication of a whole life, right? Yeah, for sure. Um, I started training year round when I was 10 years old. And when I was 12 years old, I started training twice a day. So it was, um, it's been a long, long journey to get here, but the most rewarding for sure. And, um, it came, you know, you were including, I guess, in the, in the Palestine team because of the, um, Arab games, right? Where you won, uh, you know, quite a few like races. Right? Yeah. So the reason I can represent Palestine is because my grandfather was born and raised in Palestine, specifically Gaza. Um, my family has roots very deep there. So the first Tarazi was in Palestine in year 400. Um, we traced it oh. all the way back and we've had property in Gaza since 1755. And the way property gets passed is through the mail. So my brother is actually the sole heir to our house in Gaza. Okay. So I said that's what you meant when you, when you said, like, during a few interviews that representing Palestine was you coming back to, to your roots. Yeah, for sure. Um, the Tarazi family is a very prominent family in Palestine. We think we are the oldest, if not one of the oldest Christian families in all of Palestine. So, um being able to go back and represent my roots and my family is something it's probably the biggest honor I could ever have. And did you, do you travel? I mean, have you been, I think you've been recently, right? To Palestine, but have you traveled over the years or was it kind of the first for you? Um, I actually was there last August, um, right before October 7th, which was a little bit crazy. And then I went back right before the Olympics. It was kind of a top secret trip. Was in when was out uh, about forty eight hours, but it was really special. Um, I was supposed to go back actually next week, but um, tensions are rising a little bit, so we're gonna hold off. Um, hopefully, later date yeah. go back. Yeah, and I mean you'd be sort of welcomed and received as kind of I don't want to use hero because we're in the midst of, of you know a horrible genocide that. And there's many heroes on the ground in Gaza, but still, I mean, I'm sure the reception when you're going to come back is going to be complete, you know, amazing. Yeah, I've received so much support from all the Palestinian peoples, whether they're in Gaza, the West Bank, or, um, I mean, honestly, you have Palestinians all over the world. That's just the reality of the situation. And the amount of love and support I've received um, is outstanding. So, I mean, knowing all this, you know, the, the historic roots that your family has in Gaza, and uh, you must have been just felt like pretty surreal to be the flag bearer of Palestine, you know, at the opening and the closing ceremony. How, how did you feel when you entered this like massive stadium with like thousands of people, you know? Yeah. Um, so the behind the scenes of the opening and closing is actually kind of crazy. Um, it was it was really, really fun, especially being a small delegation. Um, our team is very close, so we pretty much do everything together, which makes it really nice. Um, but being on the boat was a little bit different than I expected, just because it was one pouring rain. 
Um, but being able to stand there with Wasim, and Wasim's from Ramallah, so that guy was born and raised there. He deals with this every single day. Um, but being able to stand there and hold the flag with him, I actually refuse to go underneath. You can have someone, like, hold the flag and, like, you know, take your spot. Um, but me and Wasim stood out there in the pouring rain the entire time because we were not going to let go of that flag. Um, yeah. It was so, so special. Um, we got some of the loudest cheers from what I understand um, passing the crowd. And I just remember my parents, unfortunately, didn't get tickets to the opening. But that specific moment had been a dream of mine, something that I'd been looking forward to since they announced that um, the opening was going to be on the set. Um, that was a moment for me that um, I I just been looking forward to. It was the moment that I made it, and it was a moment that I had a chance to represent our country and show how strong we were and hold the flag high. Um, mm. And then throughout the games was really special, obviously, in the closing ceremony, 10 out of 10. Um Omar was the other flag bearer for the closing, and when we got to walk out, I don't know what happened, but I actually looked left, and immediately I found our um, Olympic Committee president and our technical director, immediately, like in that huge crowd, and yeah. I threw up the peace sign, and they threw um, they threw it back, and it was, it was something so special, you get to parade the flag around, and... Um, then you saw other Palestinian flags in the crowd. So, like, we'd point to them and they'd point back at us. And it just showed how much love and support we had. Uh, yeah, I mean, it must have felt uh, really, really amazing. I, yeah. Um, yeah. I was wondering, so uh, just about that, like, what was the reception like uh, during, you know, your stay in Paris, during the Olympics, both um, from, I guess, the general public? You, I don't know if, how much you got to actually connect with, like, like normal people, non-athletes or something, and yeah, also from yeah. the uh, you know the other you know participants. Well, well, I would say, I would in, say general, in general we receive, we receive outstanding, outstanding, support. outstanding support. Obviously, Obviously there's, a, there's little a little bit, bit um, um, of, tension, of tension, and, and you always and have, you those, always people have those people that are on the opposite view. Hmm. But but the amount of support, amount of support received, received, one from the Palestinian, from the Palestinian community, community in Paris in was Paris crazy. Was crazy. Um, um, the people of France, the people were, of France were insanely supportive, insanely of, us. supportive of us. And, and one of the cool one stories, of the cool I, have stories you, I have for you, the first day the first I was, day I was in Yazin, the other swimmer, the other swimmer. Sorry, it's kinda sorry, it's kinda echoing. Um, uh, um yeah, wait, I'll, I'll just I'll stop by my Okay. Um so the first day we were sitting in the dining hall um, with the other swimmer, Yazin, and all of a sudden, the captains of the New Zealand women's rugby team came up to us and started a conversation. Oh my gosh, you're from Palestine. We love you so much. You're so amazing. Um, we sat with them for probably 30 minutes, just had a conversation. We got pictures with them and we're like, oh my gosh, you guys are like really, really good. And... They're like, yeah, we're like, well, how you looking? Are you excited? Whatever. And, you know, just normal conversation. Um, we kept in contact throughout competition, obviously. We tried to get tickets. For some reason, we couldn't get tickets to their final game. But they ended up winning a gold medal. And I got a text about 1030 at night. And it was like, come celebrate with us. We're so excited. Everything. And I was like, I got to swim. Like, I still have my competition. I can't. But that next morning, I was headed to the pool at 8 a.m. I got a text from them. And they said, have you left yet? And I said, no. They're like, well, we're about to leave the village. Um, We got to leave. We're kind of, like, getting kicked out. So not how it works. They're like, but we're going to come find you. Where are you? And they came and found me. And I have now a signed jersey from the New Zealand rugby team the game winning jersey um we got a picture with their medal we got a picture with the jersey and they're like we love palestine we support you we are your biggest fans um so now new zealand women's rugby is our um that's our favorite team of the entire olympics and gave them a whole bag of pins and it was just something so special that 
they didn't necessarily have to do, but they went out of their way to make us feel welcome. Oh, that, that's a that's a crazy story. It, it's amazing, and I mean, I don't know if you follow rugby, but you know, New Zealand, the All Blacks are, I mean, the best. They've been oh, the for best sure, for sure. decades. Yeah. Right? They're like legends. So it's it's such a yeah a powerful story. And uh, I, I was wondering, I mean, as a Palestinian, as a as a sportswoman, do you wish like more people, more sports people, would speak out? You know. Um, about what's happening now and about Palestine in general? Because, I mean, I'll, I'll let you answer because, like, I think there's more and more, you know, in the cultural field, movie industry, there's more and more people speaking out, you know. But I think sports people are still very, very silent when it comes to Palestine. And, um, yeah, I was wondering how, how you feel about that and how you felt during the games, you know. Yeah, um... yeah. Personally, I believe that sport should be left to sport. We're there to compete. But it is also my job to spread a story. So to speak out against what's happening is not necessarily the way I would phrase it. I would just say to be able to share our story and to be able to truly understand what's happening. And I think all the Palestinian athletes and our delegation members have done a really great job of telling our stories. We're not here to be politicians, but we are here to spread awareness of what's going on, what our family, friends, teammates have to go through on a daily basis. And I think that's why I took all my interviews is because I was going to tell my story, my teammate's story, kind of what's going on. But we're going to leave the politics up to the people that are experts in that. That's just not There's not a lot of room for sports and politics. The whole goal of the Olympic movement is solidarity, peace, unity, and that's what we should be there to do. We're here to support each other, to have great competition and to compete at the highest level and represent our country. And that's what the Palestinian athletes want to do. We want to compete and we want to be a normal country. And unfortunately, that's just not the circumstance of things right now. Yeah, yeah, I, I get that, of course. Um... But I was wondering now, like, because um, I, I didn't know you before you, you made it to the Olympics, but um, where you, like, in your, in your life, you, did you always sort of describe yourself as a sort of Palestinian-American? Or, or do you feel, in a way, more Palestinian now, after the Olympics? And also, in a way, the follow-up question would be um, the U.S., where you live. I mean, Israel couldn't do what it does without the support military, politically, diplomatic of, of the U.S. Um, how does it feel in a way to be a Palestinian American in like 2024 during what's happening in, in, in Gaza? Yeah, I, yeah, I think it's interesting because I've always been Palestinian American for sure. And for sure, more recently, especially being able to go back to Palestine, be connected with more family, it's not that I feel more Palestinian. It's just I'm a little bit more connected with my roots. And it makes me feel so special. Um, Palestinians are some of the sweetest, kindest people you've ever met. And they will literally give you the shirt off their back when it comes down to it. And I think that's a, that's a stereotype that's not seen. Um, As for living in America, I'm so lucky because I don't have issues. Um, Auburn, Alabama is very supportive of me. I have the best coaches, the best facilities, the best athletic department in the country. They support what I do. They let me do it at the highest level. And they have. They always have. So being an American, like, yes. Am I am I thrilled about what's happening? No, but again, I'm not a politician. I, I leave that to whatever's going on. Clearly, I see what's going on is very wrong, and I am fully with Palestine on that, but I do what I can. I spread my message. I spread my story. I have conversations daily um, about what really is going on, because the media has censored a lot of things, and I think that's just as much as I can do as an athlete. Um, my next project is actually um, going to be a project bringing, it's going to be something along the lines of peace through sport. And we're going to bring sport to Palestine in a bigger way. 
So we'll have a bunch of donations, sports equipment, fields, whatever we can do, because I always say that sport has given me so much and I want to give back. Like that's something I'm so passionate about is giving back to the next generation. Um, so we're going to be working on that. I have my dissertation in humanitarian supply chain coming through too. So um, obviously delivering aid for to Gaza is one of my key points of it. Um, so yeah, I'm just, I'm in a very unique situation. I say I'm one of the luckiest Palestinians in the world, but I'm also one of the unluckiest because I can't go back and live in Palestine. It's just, it's not the reality of the situation. Yeah, it looks like it's going to be a, a busy few weeks and, and months for you. Uh, so I'm going to end with this um, question about, I mean, you tell me, but I'm sure your life has ch changed in so many ways over the last, I guess, few months. Um, you know, going to the Olympics, uh, being the flag bearer, um, becoming, in a way, this very public figure, you know, even if, as you said, you're a sportswoman, but, you know, you, you've become, in a way, one of the face of, of Palestine as well. Um, in a way, does it give you, I mean, you sort of responded already, right? But does it give you a sense of, uh, of added responsibility? You know, is it, you know, is it something you welcome also, or is it something you kind of worry about? Um, um, both, both. So I, my life really changed at Arab Games last year. Um, I never would have expected to be in this position. I love to swim. Like, bottom line, very base of everything is I'm a swimmer and I love to swim. I could have been done swimming like four years ago, <laughs> but I just want to keep going. That's just something I'm, I, I've loved since I was very young. Um, but The moment my life really changed was at Arab Games, but I didn't realize it in the moment. I didn't realize, like, what I had done. Um, then throughout this whole process, I was asked to start traveling with our Olympic committee, our delegation. And I was in Switzerland um, last April, and I had the chance to meet with um, the FIFA, the International Olympic Committee, and I made a bunch of connections with ambassadors, and I was having just a very simple conversation about Um, like, what do you do? What are you graduating? And I kind of explained the, my whole process. And she's like, oh, yeah, I know supply chain. I work with the UN, with humanitarian supply chain. I was like, how have I done an undergrad and master's and I don't know what humanitarian supply chain is? That um, I was going to get a job after graduation in May. I mean, one month later, I was going to go into the corporate world, have a job set up for after the Olympics. And that was a moment where I was like, No, I'm actually going to get a PhD in this because I can make a bigger difference. Um, so yes, like my whole life has changed in the last year, um, a course that I never expected, but that is something that I'm taking. Um, I take every single opportunity I get. It is the coolest thing in the whole world. I welcome it. Um, I have a platform now. People seem to be listening to me, which I think is the coolest thing ever because People aren't listening to Palestinians, and I think I'm. I can bridge the gap a little bit. Being strong Palestinian Christian, origins in Gaza, but I'm American, and I have a Western um, outlook on things in some ways, and I can bridge that gap. And I think that's a very unique situation for me. Um, it almost turns Palestinians more human, and I I say that in a light sense because I feel like Palestinians are put in a box right now where it's just oh there's another one like that's a number it's I think it it makes us a little bit more humane and that's really what I want to do is Palestinians are people we want to live normal lives and um I think just having athletes participate at the games shows that like we're normal people and we we want the same things that other people want Yeah, thanks for this, Valerie. I think it's um, it's a very good point, and actually, I, I think it's very sad to say that we have to humanize the Palestinians, right? Because like the dehumanization, in a way, the propaganda against the Palestinians has been so strong over the last twenty, thirty years that we have to do this job. When, as you've said um, five minutes ago. Uh, I've been to Palestine a few times. Um, I've had friends who were like nurses who were in Gaza recently. 
And they came back from Gaza saying, uh, we found humanity in Gaza. She, you know, I mean, a friend of mine, she's called Iman, she's a nurse. She said, like, I got to Gaza and I couldn't believe the people facing this horror were asking me, how do I feel? What do I need? She was like, I couldn't. At one point, she said to a, to a woman, oh, I really like your, your, your veil. And like the next day, she gave it to her. Yep. And then she was like, I just couldn't b believe it. The, and I've felt this as well. I've never been to Gaza, but I've been to the, to the West Bank and East Jerusalem many, many times. And um, I, I always tell the story. There was this street in Nablus in the West mm -hmm. Bank where after five days, I decided to completely avoid because every time I was going through this street, it was a street with like cafe shops and coffee shops. It would take me like 45 minutes and I'll, I'll eat like, you know, half a kilo of knafe and like, and, and I think this is something that people have to understand. And, um, and I think through also your story and the Olympics and, and the, the, the swimming and, um, yeah, it can only help. It's, it's a small drop in a way. Right. But yeah. I think one of the, I think one of those things, things like, things the... like the weirdest reality weirdest of it reality is that kind of, you got Palestine, you, you Palestine. expected to be a war zone. And I'm talking like pre-October 7th. You expect it to be desert, things blown up, um, like it, very inhumane, like people living on the streets. And yes, there are parts of Palestine like that. Absolutely. I, I'm not saying that. And especially now. But Palestine is so beautiful. It has beautiful cities beautiful seas right on the Jordan River and people don't see that we were always told how unsafe the West Bank was and do not go there do not travel there and when we would go like yes there are dangers absolutely the Palestinians are beyond oppressed but they also live a normal life in the sense that you can go down the street and get a uh, kanafa and coffee and have a great day and i i wish more people saw how beautiful palestine is it really is the most beautiful country in the world to me thanks valerie yeah thank you. yeah thank you hey um and um yeah again thank you for making the time to, to talk to me today absolutely and, i mean and good luck with everything the sport the studies you know thanks yeah. thank you thank you